recent memory. Mike Baker is a former CIA covert operations officer, also the co-founder of the global security firm Diligence LLC and is with us now. So Mike, with your experience, why is this so alarming and threatening? Well, it's, it's an escalation. Look, I, I, these things have happened before and they will continue to happen, uh, whether it's between uh, us and the, and the Russians or whether it's uh, with China and the South China Sea. Uh, there was a similar incident in October of last year and June of last year. Um, the, the truth about foreign policy, the truth about the way that nations act, uh, A, is that they always act in their own best interests, and B, is nothing happens in a bubble. So there's, always, there's no such thing as a, as a coincidence, in other words. Um, the fact that we are seeing increased tensions uh, in terms of NATO, in terms of uh, our effort to try to reassure our NATO allies right now that we aren't leaving the world stage in this regard, that we're not going to leave it up to the Russians to decide what happens, particularly in Eastern Europe, uh, that isn't missed by Putin. And Putin is a fairly simple cat to understand. This administration, and to be fair, the previous administration, really has, has not understood what he's like. He's a fairly simple person. When he said 10 years ago, that the collapse of the Soviet Union was the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century, he means it. And he has been trying to rebuild some a aspect of the former Soviet Union, not necessarily just in territory, but in influence, right. ever since he's been in charge. So that means annexing the Crimea, the Ukrainian conflict, uh, committing troops to Syria, trying mm -hmm. to be a player on the world stage. So mm -hmm. what does that mean when he thinks of the United States? What does that mean as far as how he views us and what we're doing when we happen to be 70 miles off his shores? Right. Well, I mean, first of all, it's international waters. Right. And so in international waters, we tend to do the same thing. We'll monitor their activities. They'll monitor our activities. But it shouldn't be missed that the fact that we were having naval exercises uh, with our most important ally out there, the Poles, um, they're sending a message to them almost more than they're sending a message to us. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is we can do what we want to do. And we're not worried about U.S. pushback. Now, people are saying this is they're playing with fire. This is a dangerous game. Look, the Russians aren't going to war with us and we're not going to war with the Russians. I think, to be fair, the White House has had the proper measured response. Right? You know, this is like your toddler throwing his teddy out of the crib. You know, you, 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 you have to be uh, circumspect and pragmatic in how you respond. What we should do, though, because Putin understands strength, that's how he uh, he acts. He understands. And, and, and when he doesn't see strength, he continues to push the envelope. So he's the bully on the block. He's the bully on the block. What we should do is not necessarily double down. But what we should do is is put additional resources. We're in the process of doing essentially what's called a, a NATO reassurance uh, move, where we're putting more money and resources, uh, personnel, uh, hardware out into that theater. Well, what we should do is ratchet it up a little bit. Say, look, if you, we do that, Mike, yeah. but if we do that, and is it your estimation and the estimation of a security analyst that Putin plays the long game? You want to ratchet up, he's going to ratchet up mm -hmm. because he's going to be there much longer than President Obama and even perhaps the next president of right. the United States, the way things play out politically in Russia. Right. So he's playing the long game, and if he believes that the collapse of the Soviet Union was the worst thing that's happened in the 20th century, might not he have aspirations to rebuild some semblance of that uh no it's that, a it's, it's a very good point and it's exactly the way you need to look at this but uh, and he'll, he's never going to give up those those aspirations and so you're absolutely right however he has to see that our response is not to pull back our response is not to just say okay well you know you know you're, you're playing a dangerous game here don't do that send a harshly worded you know no to him it's not going to have the effect that we want if you put some additional resource, if you hold an additional summit, if you continue to do these things where you say we're not going anywhere, we are not abandoning NATO. In fact, we are uh, rededicating ourselves to it. And again, don't over egg the pudding. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we're not talking about dumping, you know, large amounts of personnel and resources there. But just showing him that this doesn't this doesn't have the effect that you want to have on us because we're stronger than that. That's where he understands, uh, the, you know, how to the neg negotiate. If we don't do that, if we if we have no response to this whatsoever, other than maybe the, again that harshly worded memorandum, he's going to continue to do this. ISIS obviously is on the minds of many right now. New threats are out there against mm -hmm. Representative Keith Ellison and also Uba Abedin, who is a uh, Clinton uh, ca advisor uh, for a long time. How serious are the threats, without reading some of the things in their responses, how serious are these threats and should they be taken? 
Well, they should be taken seriously, and and primarily because <clears throat> what you worry about it, it not necessarily that ISIS is going to send out some hit team to you know to go, away, but it's the individual who, as we've seen repeatedly, can be motivated by things that ISIS uh, and and their sort of their media wing right, push they have, like, out 10 there. Ten people on this list that were that they right, have right, put right. So the out problem to. is sort of that that lone individual or the person who's troubled and, and for whatever reason is motivated by something like this. You have to take threats from from an organization like this because it, it's a top down. It's it's Islamic extremism, you know, and oftentimes they mean what they say. Uh, so if they put somebody on a hit list, yes, of course, pay attention. We would be foolish not to. It doesn't mean they you know these individuals have to go hide in a foxhole somewhere, but they have to pay, pay attention. Uh, I, my, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I feel like we've asked this question over the last couple of days and we'll continue to. With the politics that are going on here in the U.S., it's ISIS, it's Putin that it affects, this global stage. Mm -hmm. What are we hearing sort of as a responses? Because you hear Donald Trump talk about NATO and it's mm -hmm. a very different response than what you're talking about. It right. doesn't mean he's the next president, but even in right. regards to ISIS as well, it has to be having an impact. Uh, it, it is. I spend a lot of my time overseas. And um, yes, I, I worry a great deal. Look, we are facing right now more um, crisis, more potential flashpoints than we've seen in a very long time. Our, our top threats never really change over the years, Russia, China, Iran. But the, the intensity with which some of those concerns have been escalating recently. And then you, you, you look at, at ISIS, you look at that region. Who are the big winners right now in, the, in that region? Well, it's Russia, frankly, and, and Iran and Assad. I mean, right. they're the ones who have won. So I understand, as an example, the president coming out you know, and, and talking about how, look, we're gaining ground That's there. That's what I was going to ask you. He, yeah. he said yesterday, that, and, and this is a policy that he put back in December, he said there are three R's, raids, Raqqa, and Ramadi. He has taken out, he says, numerous ISIS targets. He's pushed them back. He says they haven't had a major offensive since last summer. So clearly... Mm -hmm the strategy that the president and his national security team is putting into place is working on some mm -hmm. level. If they put out a flashy uh, you know, media thing, if they tweet out stuff, and they, I mean, is that really right. sort of signaling the death throes or not? Well, it's not the death throes, but it shows that they are on their back foot. Look, I, 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 we have to be careful, right? Because uh, there's this tendency to not give a particular administration credit for anything, whether it was in the Bush administration right. or whether it's in the Obama administration. The, the truth of the matter is we do have them on the back foot. We have regained territory. We, we have reduced their, their revenue streams, in a sense. Uh, we are getting better at taking out some of their key leaders. Now, there seems to be a bottomless well of, of new recruits right. that they, they pull from. But we have to acknowledge those, those things are, are happening, and that's a good thing. But we also have to understand that, look, this group is very capable of morphing and adjusting and adapting. Just like they've been pushing a lot of resource into Libya now and elsewhere, they're also going to be doing things such as lashing out further in, in the West, uh, such as you know, sending out these messages about their target list, their hit list. So they'll adapt as we have success. The sort of the... Uh, I, I suppose the, the part here that people need to understand also is the more success we have in, in retaking territory in Iraq and Syria and, and, and squeezing them and, and, and getting rid of this caliphate that they, they've been jonesing for, the more likely we're going to see increased attacks overseas. And that's going to cause some issues. People are, people are going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of reflexive nature back, and they're going to say, what's happening? We're not winning. Look at this. There is another attack overseas. That's a result of losing that turf and that territory and that capability at, 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 from their perspective in the home front. We can't judge winning in the same ways we used to always. Mike, thank you very thank much. You. Sure, thank you.